Hello, my name is Connie Liu. I'm an undergraduate at MIT, and today we're going to be talking about predation. So the most common thing you probably think of when you think of a predator is something like a lion attacking a gazelle. That's a very good example of what a predator would be. Um, often you think of it in terms of a predator-prey relationship. In this case, or in the case we just talked about, the predator would be the lion and the prey would be the gazelle. And what these are known for is that one species or one individual is benefiting from this interaction, but the other one is suffering because of it. Um, so this is a plus minus interaction. So essentially the predator is killing the prey, so the uh, prey is suffering and the predator is benefiting because now it can eat the prey and get food from that. Um, most species have adaptations to avoid predators. Uh, one example you might be able to think of is a chameleon. A chameleon is able to camouflage with, with its surroundings, and that's one way it can hide from predators that might eat it otherwise. Other types of species also are able to produce poison or produce some type of uh, hindrance to, from allowing predators to eat them. Another good example would be porcupines. Porcupines have quills on them, so um, if, a, if a predator tries to eat it, it can use its quills uh, to, to actually deter the predator from eating it just because it's so sharp and the predator will get hurt if it tries to eat the porcupine. So that's another example of a prey that has developed adaptations to avoid being prey. Um, and then another really common example would be of a skunk. You often smell the very fragrant or frankly not that pleasant smell of uh, a skunk. Um, whenever they release that smell, they're actually being threatened by a predator, so they're trying to get the predator to go away. Because of the smell, most predators do go away, and that's another adaptation that skunks have had or have developed to avoid becoming food for a predator.